So um, now we're going to go to Romans chapter 7, you chose through 11. And I got out of this a prescription for sin. Mm -hmm. If you get by, bit by a poisonous snake, they give you an antidote. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Now this is where it gets dicey because some people are going to say Jesus is the antidote. Okay. And I'm going to say Yahshua is the antidote. Yeah. Because Jesus doesn't teach keeping the commandments. And that's exactly what we're going to get out of this part over here. But Yahshua does teach keeping the commandments. Yeah. And that is God. the antidote. So let's read what this says here. Mm -hmm. What shall we say then? Is the law of Moses and of the gospels as a prescription a, uh, a sin? Mm -hmm. So in other words, is the law a sin? Mm -hmm. How can be the law be a sin if it tells you what sin is? Mm -hmm. it, 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 and it's interesting in the translation how I say the law of Moshe and mm -hmm. that word and the gospels, which everybody say mm -hmm. is the word, is the logos, is Yeshua as a prescription of sin. Mm -hmm. Is Yeshua is the law of the spirit. He is that law. Uh, everybody says, oh, the law of Moses. You keep the law of Moses. Well, Moses did write something, but he didn't write them Ten Commandments. No, he didn't. That, <laughs> that came was the, from the spirit one, of Yahweh. That's the spirit of Yahweh that <laughs> the, came through his son mm -hmm. who spoke to Moses. Those it, exactly. So yeah. everybody, they, they, they try to intertwine them in a way that you just can't intertwine the spirit with the flesh. And so I think by you picking the letter of the law, you being in, in the midst, you got to be able to differentiate, to discern mm -hmm. where you at, where you standing at in here. And it's going to take believing. It's because 40 years they were in the desert, in the wilderness, in unbelief, seeing the works. You know what you're doing because it's a spiritual law in this world that tells every man, huh? Something's wrong with that. You shouldn't have done that. I know I used to do things, uh, and I'm and I'm talking about after I claim I have the knowledge. I, a lot of stuff I did without the knowledge, but when I came into the knowledge, I might have talked to my wife real harshly, and it's something to say, you shouldn't have said that. Mm -hmm. And though I apologize, I know I slipped. I was deceived in a manner because I didn't think. I spoke too quickly. I wasn't right, quick right, to right. listen to yeah. the spirit of the law saying, honor your wife. Yeah, that was uncalled Give for. your life yeah. for you your wife. You didn't need to go that far. Right. You, this is a person. So you, you killed her with that law. Yes, I did. Yeah. And... Oh, I'm I'm finding a scripture to let, allow me. <laughs> <laughs> we got a whole the bunch way of to knowing. do it, but <laughs> I know if I'm doing judgment without mercy, yeah, yeah, then I better receive, be ready to receive another judgment without mercy coming back mm -hmm. to me. And mm -hmm. so I I'm not fast enough to listen before I react a lot of time. So I'm just saying these are some of the most normal and candid ways that we can fall into a snare. All right. I'm glad you said it that way. Because you know what just hit me by the rock? Uh -huh. Okay. So this idea that the law is done away, it's, 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 it's gone, you know, it was nailed to the cross, as they like to say, yes. which that's not what it's talking about, but we're not going there today. What dawned on me was, in the moment you said something to your wife, that you knew you got pricked in the spirit that that's mm -hmm. not what you should have said. Shouldn't have said that. <laughs> and that, that killed her in, mm -hmm. in, in a sort of way. Yes. Okay. And then the word came to you. You should not have done that. Mm -hmm. Now I want to ask you a question and I want to ask people out there a question. Mm -hmm. Is that a command from Yahweh? Is it a law? I believe so. It's a law. I believe because so. it's an instruction. The law means to instruct, mm -hmm. to teach, to guide to the path of righteousness. So you were acting in a way that was not righteous. And he came in and said, oh, no, no, no. You shouldn't have done that. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give you a command or an instruction, which is based on the principle of my righteous law that you went too far and didn't exercise enough mercy. 
-hmm. in what you said. Mm -hmm. Or you should have char used a different set of words. So if you want to go on the idea, this is where I'm going. If you want to go on the idea that the law is done away, then why would Yahweh send you a law about that if it's dead? <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? I understand. That's nonsense. Mm -hmm. It's absolute nonsense. It, it, it just it doesn't drive with the with the scriptures. They just don't connect code. them. Yeah, they don't they connect. Can't connect them. And you know, you're one now with this person. Right. So you're basically destroying yourself exactly if you want to yeah. listen to the spirit of mm -hmm. yahweh who mm -hmm. say now two have became one flesh and so even when you're talking to her you're talking to a weaker part of you i know i'm fragile but if i'm fragile then why i'm not considering another part of me being just as fragile and i need to take care of how i handle that part you know and so we have to walk in the in the commandments give us the way to walk, even in the most fragile of places, you know, on the most shallow ground, on the most, uh, how would you say, dry ground, mm -hmm. that there's water in there. You just got to walk carefully until you step in the water. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and that's, 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 I think that's what he was showing me as he was leading me down this road. We had to have a starting point. And if I don't have a starting point and I get halfway through my life and I forget I don't need the starting point no more, well, how can I remember from where I came? It was something that got me here. So you got me here, I don't need you anymore? It wouldn't make sense to me. No. If you got me here, then I gotta remember you and honor you. Right. But if the, if the law, the commandment, showed me what sin is, and now I don't need you no more to show me what sin is. How am I going to know when I sin? How am I going to get up and repent as they do without some law telling me I need to repent? You know, where do I get this, this, this information from about yeah. I'm a sinner. Yeah. If there's no law to tell me I'm a sinner. Well, I'm, I'm already righteous. I don't even need Yeshua. Mm -hmm. What I'm a repent for if he did away with the law. Mm -hmm. Right. So, uh, it's kind of humorous, but you know, when we have children and we raise them up, mm -hmm. we put a simulation potty to teach them how to go potty by themselves. Exactly. Now, do you have a teenager that still comes to you and wants to sit on that little potty? Or did you teach him how to go to the bathroom on his own? Yes. At some point, the goal here is to get you off the potty to where you're self-sufficient. Mm -hmm. Once you know how to go potty by yourself, you don't need mommy to teach you that no more. Mm -hmm. You know, doesn't the scripture says, for the law was our schoolmaster to bring us to Messiah. Yes, yes. That's an ongoing process that goes all the way through to the end of your life. <laughs> Nobody I know knows the whole law so perfectly, other than Yahshua himself, mm -hmm. knows the law so perfect that they don't need the law anymore. Uh, I, I, I agree 100%, brother. I'm telling you, uh, he is speaking. He's speaking to someone today. If you say you need him, even without the law, it's something that's telling you you need him. Mm -hmm. What is it? Right. What is it that's telling you that you need him? that you need his forgiveness, that you need his mercy. What is it? What was it that led? It wasn't your own mind. What was it that talked to you and spoke to you to say, please forgive me, Abba? Yeah, what are you violating that you need that? Yes, it's something. It's something there, and I'm telling you, if you sinning and you say you sin, well, it's a law right. that told you so. That told you so. You may not know how to define it, <laughs> but that's why you need the Ruach to teach you how to go discover what that is exactly, and how deep that rabbit hole goes. Cause I can tell you law of Yahweh is not a superficial surface law. It's a law that goes way down deep into the rabbit hole. Mm -hmm. You know, you want that, take the blue pill. If you don't want that, take the red pill and you go back and you be like everybody else, like in the matrix movie. Okay. Let's move on. So, He's saying is the law of sin. Mm -hmm. He says, certainly not. Mm -hmm. Yahweh forbid. Mm -hmm. On the contrary, mm -hmm. I would have not known to be aware of or could understand sin 
except through the law. Mm -hmm. So what he's saying is there's no other source mm -hmm. that I can go to that tells me how I'm supposed to behave, okay, so that I please Yahweh. And here's the other thing. I meet people that, that are into other spiritual philosophies. Mm -hmm. And... They, they give them a moral code that sometimes has a basis in Scripture, but oftentimes it's based on another premise, which twists it in another way. But mm -hmm. let's just leave it at that. Mm -hmm. But they, they're instructed about a perverted morality mm -hmm. from this entity. And what I say to them is, how do you know who you're talking to or who's talking to you? Mm -hmm. And I've never met one yet. Oh, they might be able to tell me a name. But you know how many people call me on the phone and they tell me and their name is Joe and it's really Steve because they're trying to swindle me? I have no way to prove that. Right. <laughs> Are you that gullible that you believe this entity that you can't see that's trying to tell you a law that contradicts Yahweh's law? Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. So it's a dangerous mm -hmm. road when you go down that road. Yes. Because Thanks. you think you're so smart and you have so much spiritual discernment that you know what it is you're talking to or is talking to you, and you ain't got a clue. Yes. You ain't you. got a clue. So my point in this is that in order to know the true Yahweh, you're going to see him through his divine law. Yes. And if you're not schooled in divine law, you will not know whose voice is talking to you. Mm -hmm. Because I'll tell you, whenever somebody is trying to swindle you out of money, the last thing they want you to know is know what their true identity is. Yes. That's why these entities keep themselves secret in the spirit realm, because they know you're too ignorant to be able to test those spirits to know whether it's a Yahweh or not. Yes. But the law helps you with certain principles mm -hmm. and concepts that allows you to be able to scrutinize that entity. Mm -hmm. Like when I've had to cast out unclean spirits, I use the law to interrogate the unclean spirit to find out exactly what he is and what his motive is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And boy, they don't like that mm -hmm. because now you just uncovered what they're all about. The law is useful if you use it wisely. Yes. Let's yes. go on. Mm -hmm. For I would not have known covetousness by setting the heart upon lust, mm -hmm. unless the law of Moses and the Gospels as a prescription had said, you shall not covet. What law was that? That was Ten Commandments, Ten Commandments right in there. The huh? simple. This is what we're talking mm -hmm. about today. Just the simple Ten. Mm -hmm. Forget about all the other ones. Mm -hmm. Forget about the ceremonial mm -hmm. laws that the priests perform. So that rabbit hole is too deep for most people to go down. Let's just keep it simple. Let's mm -hmm. just deal with the Ten. Mm -hmm. And Ten Commandments is a law. It is a law. A law. Now, it, it, why would you want to say that's done away with? When Paul is saying that's not done away with. Right there. I wouldn't have known that. Said, well, can you covet now since the law is done away with? Can you lust now? Oh, I know they'll say, oh, you wouldn't do these things if the spirit is, is in you. Well, the spirit can't be in you because it's a spiritual law. And if you're doing away with the law, then you, you don't have the spirit. Because Yeshua is the law of the spirit. And the scripture says, for the carnal mind cannot receive the, the, cannot keep the law of Yahweh and is not subject to the law of Yahweh and cannot be subject to the law of Yahweh. For it is spiritually discerned, for the spirit teaches us all things and leads us into all truth. Baruch Hashem. So how in the world you as a Gentile or a Christian, I get a lot of them, mm -hmm. going to school me who's of Israel? We're going to get into that a little bit in a little mm -hmm. while. Mm -hmm. And you're going to tell me what I don't know? You're a lawbreaker. You're acting as a heathen, worshiping unclean spirits with your philosophy, and you're going to tell somebody of Israel what he could believe or not? What kind of an idiocy is that? I, 
I, I mean, listen, Anthony. Yes. We're going to get into some of these verses, man. It's going to get <laughs> uglier as we go along. But look, this is where the rubber meets the road. Mm -hmm. You can't get into that attitude. You don't. I don't think they even realize what kind of damnable jeopardy they are putting themselves into when they start boasting against the natural olive tree. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, the only thing I can conclude is either ignorance, arrogance, you think what you got is better than what I got, whatever you want to say, or you've completely written Paul off and you don't believe anything that Paul says to the Gentiles. I think they just been deceived. Well, that they're being and deceived for it's sure. A easy, yeah. It's an easy deception because this deception grants the flesh to stay in the flesh. Exactly. It it it, it pleases the flesh. I can I could yeah. accept that in a heartbeat mm -hmm. if he hadn't put this this love of his within my heart if he wouldn't have took his time to just start writing on my heart i would accept this 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 doctrine in a heartbeat because Absolutely. it would allow me it's easy it would allow me to remain yeah. as i was right and saying nothing has to change about me but we got a lot of that going on in the body of yashua yeah yes people yes. who crept in and they're behaving like they were as Christians out there, but they're just doing it in the body of Messiah. Exactly. You know, they crept in unannounced, and some of them like to be teachers. But, okay, um, look, at the end of the day, this is going to come down to you're, on, you're either going to be a sheep or a goat. Mm -hmm. This flock is going to be separated from the ones to the right to the ones to the left. Yes. For those who don't like this, they don't want to hear about it, all that kind of stuff, Go knock yourself out because there ain't going to be nothing you could do about it. This law of how this righteousness works is there and it's here in the world. Mm -hmm. And it's going to stay in the world until it is complete. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we're going to find out who stands and who doesn't stand. So let's move on to uh, verse 9. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, 9. So... I was alive once in the past mm -hmm. without being in the presence of the law mm -hmm. or the Torah or the mm -hmm. commandments, however. Mm -hmm. But the commandment came, appeared and entered sin, revived mm -hmm. and recovered to life. And I died. I was I was living a, a manner of life once. I knew about sin. I heard all about it, but. Who don't sin? That's that's what I was taught. Who don't You're sin? You're destined to do it anyway. And Why fight it? <laughs> some of the things I saw those people that were going to church on a Sunday, every Sunday, and now I even see them on Shabbat. Some of those people, and I was a sinner out there. And I say, if they going to heaven, I know I'm going because I'm not doing half of the <laughs> stuff they doing. So yeah. why should I go and ask for any kind yeah, of forgiveness? You have a better position in the kingdom. But one day, it was a law that came. Yeah. And it was a secular law that showed me it was some consequences for that manner of uh, life I was yeah. living. Yeah. And then it led me into the, to the search of how to live right. Huh? How can I live right in this body? And it led me to a law. And you could huh? have done that on your own and because we're already told in Scripture the carnal mind is not subject to that. So you subject. couldn't have possibly go look for it yourself. Mm -mm. It led me. It heard my crying. Right. He heard me crying. Right. Huh? I don't want to leave this world right. hmm, in this condition. When I leave, I want to have a right relationship with you. I messed up my relationships with everybody mm -hmm. else, but I'm going to leave. This is my last moment on this world. I'll never see this outside world again to make it right with anybody else that I have destroyed, or offended, or used, and abused, and I can't make it right with them. I say, well, give me a chance to make it right with you. Because I don't want this punishment that's going to come on me. Those were my words. And he began to lead me and show me that 
you can't live like that. Mm. The laws in the world are set up to tell us you can't live like that. But we find what they call loopholes that you can get around it. Mm. They practice it in the courtroom mm -hmm. that, oh, this law against this state versus this person and that person was used your honor. So we can use this case to exonerate my client. Mm? And you just pay a little money and you're going on down the road. But you can't buy yourself out of sin. Right, right. Huh? This comes from repentance. And if you don't, if you don't know the law, then how are you going to know how to truly repent? That's where we started out with our last discussion. True repentance. What's going to lead you there? You need some instructions. This foundation already been laid, brother. I was living a good life. Huh? But when this law came, whoo! <laughs> <laughs> that life ended. Yeah, right. Huh? Party over. And now the law's living within me. Yeah. Sin can't live there no more. Right. It's the law written in there. Living. Oh, am I saying I'm perfect? No, I'm not saying I'm perfect. It's the one that I proclaim that lives and breathes. It's the perfect one. I'm talking about him. And his law is perfect and just and true. And can't no man do away with it. Oh, Paul did away with it. Paul, our teacher. Paul is writing all of this. Is that really what he's teaching you? This is the writer of the book of Romans. To the people in the Gentiles the that Gentiles were in Rome. Gentile ministry. But Paul went to the Jew first. Just read about him. Stop being deceived. Read about him a little bit. See for yourself. That's what the law tells you. It gives you a vision. It gives you a light that you can see a little bit clearer. See is what they're telling you the truth. And you will find that they're lying to you. That's right. And that's a commandment. Thou shall not lie. That done away with too? So it's okay to receive the lie too. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what Adam and Eve did. You know, um, I'm thinking about it and um I just want to say this, two things on this, to the Christian. I know there's many of them out there that think they're doing the right thing. Yes. And I'm not judging that. Mm -hmm. I want to be straight about that. I, I might use some harsh language, and uh, that's just the way I am. But I know that, I know that you want to do good. Mm -hmm. And I know that you're searching for those. I'm speaking to those. Mm -hmm. The other ones, they're just hypocrites. Okay. And they're into religion. They're not spiritual. They're into religion. I'm talking about the ones that want to be spiritual. Mm -hmm. That's the ones I'm trying to address. For the other ones, I want to say this. That life that you live in with that cheap grace that you live by, mm -hmm. you might as well live a nihilistic life. Mm -hmm. Okay. And don't use religion to cover what you do in secret. A nihilist is a person who just really does denies that there is an Elohim, mm -hmm. that there is a creator. Mm -hmm. Just go do that. Because in the end, you're going to end up in the same consequence no matter which side of that fence you're on. Yes. Now, that aside, those guys are gone out of the way. I don't have much to say to them. For the other ones that are spiritual, that are, are trying to find and sort their way through what does the scriptures really say about some of these different subjects. I'm appealing to them. I'm going to make this real simple about this law that we're talking about, about the letter of the law, okay? I'm going to put this on a, uh, a layman layer, a human level that can be understood. One day, many years ago, I was driving down the expressway. I think I told you about this before. I'm driving down the expressway because I'm reading here. He says, I was alive once in the past without mm -hmm. the law, mm -hmm. being a pr in the presence of the law, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So I'm running down the highway at about 60 miles an hour, four lane highway. I'm in the middle. I'm going the same speed as the traffic. I'm on my way somewhere. I'm happy as can be. Everything is fantastic. And I'm sure many of you out there have experienced something like this. So you'll be able to understand how simple this concept is about the law, okay? And I'm going down the expressway, 
And I look in my rearview mirror and a state trooper pulls in behind me and his blue lights are going. And I'm like, you can't be serious. Mm. What does this joker want with me? I'm going the same <laughs> speed as everybody else. I'm not pumping my brakes. There's nothing obvious to my senses that there's anything wrong. Mm -hmm. He's just singling me out for whatever. The devil might be angry with me for something. Who knows? So I pull over and I'm mad because I didn't see any justification for this cop to be pulling me over. Mm -hmm. So I'm not happy about this. He comes walking up and he says, I need your driver's license and your insurance ID. And I said, can I ask you why you stopped me? I'll tell you in a minute. Please let me have the information. So I handed it to him. I'm sitting there and I'm mad. I'm like, what could this guy possibly have on me? Mm -hmm. I haven't broken the law. I haven't done anything wrong. And I convinced myself I was innocent as could be. So he looks it over. He goes back to his car for a couple minutes. I guess he run a check on me. He comes back. I'm like, you know, I'm just, I'm just agitated, you know, cause it stopped me from going where I want to go. You know, I was alive. I mm -hmm. was going somewhere. I was having a good time. Mm -hmm. So he comes up and he hands it back to me. He says, do you know why I stopped you? I said, no, sir. I didn't. I was respectable, but I wasn't happy. Mm -hmm. He goes, the reason why I pulled you over is because your license plate was expired three months ago. Oh no. Are you? And I knew in that moment, when that verbal law entered into my ears and into my heart, I forgot to re-register my vehicle. Mm -hmm. Guilty as charged. Mm -hmm. Simple, but it makes the point. Yes. Until that law gets into your hearing and convicts your heart, you don't even know what you're guilty of. Mm-hmm. And I can run down the list, and that's not what that is today. Yes. Today, we're sticking on to this, and we're trying to come at this from different angles yes. so that people can understand how simple this is. Even a five-year-old child can understand this. Mm -hmm. But I'm dealing with adults that can't get this because mm -hmm. they're angry and they're upset that I'm telling them they need to give up their paganistic life. Mm -hmm. Yes. You think I'm doing it because I'm mad at you? You think I'm doing it because I want to put you into bondage? I'm doing it because like how you open, he put this love mm -hmm. into my heart. Yes. yes. I know how it's benefited my life because mm -hmm. my life came from a place of total disruption, confusion, and mayhem. Yes. Absolute mayhem. Mm -hmm. Everything I touched mm -hmm. went to hell. Mm -hmm. But little by little over the years, when that law refined me and taught me how to go and my character began to change, then the sequence of events begin to change in my life. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you. And I want people to understand if you're going through those kinds of things and your life is not working for you, it's because you're trying to head west looking for a sunrise. Yes. And you can't do that. No. It don't work. Oh, no. Any moron understands you don't head west looking for a sunrise. At some point, mm -hmm. you have to stop and start asking yourself some questions. Why is my life not working? Why am I bucking and fighting? Why am I arguing against what I know that this creator is trying to show me? Yes. And every day you entertain that is another day you have lost in moving in the right direction where your life begins to transform into something else and it becomes much more enlightened. Oh, Enough yes. said with that. Mm -hmm. That's what I got. And so that's what I wanted to give. Mm -hmm. So, um, so he went on to say here, so when the law came, mm -hmm. like with me, appeared and entered, mm -hmm. sin revived. Yes, I'll see. So mm -hmm. as far as I was concerned, that sin was dead about the license plate. Yep. But it was still there. Mm -hmm. I just wasn't thinking about it because I forgot about it. Mm -hmm. But when he told me about it, it revived. Yep. And you know what? I have to give him credit. He says, take your license and your insurance papers. I'm not going to write you up. It happens. People forget. I can tell you're not a, one of those people, you know, that does it on purpose. And he says, just go take care of this in the next couple of days because it will be on record 
And if we have to stop you again and it happens, then you're going to get a ticket. I said, thank mm-hmm. you so much. I appreciate that. I did. I swear. I did not realize that. He goes, ah, let's go ahead and go. Mm-hmm. There's the mercy. Yes, that was mercy. So yeah. even in man's system of law, mm-hmm. it's funny. We'll go into a court and we'll sit in front of a judge and he'll point the finger at you and tell you that you are guilty of some sort of statute or civil law or criminal law, whatever, you mm-hmm. know, mm-hmm. and you're, you got a, a jury of your peers and they convict you and you have to submit to that law. But the one that made all the other laws and the men that institute them who put you under control because you're out of control, Mm -hmm. him you won't listen to. Mm -hmm. Now, in my book, that's the definition of a hypocrite. Mm -hmm. That's the definition of a hypocrite. Mm -hmm. So for those of you that indulge in that, call yourself a hypocrite. I am a hypocrite by definition Mm -hmm. because I respect man's law, but I won't respect Yahweh's law. Mm -hmm. Now, those a lot of them people are the same kind of people that if they could get rid of man's law, they would do it. Because they don't want no law because they want to do whatever they want to do. Mm-hmm. So they destroy their lives and they destroy everybody around them. Mm-hmm. Enough with that. Ro- okay, verse 10. And the commandment which was to bring life. Mm-hmm. Now how can something that br- supposed to bring life brings death? Mm-hmm. Because I found mm-hmm. with perception to bring death. Mm-hmm. Look at that. I found with perception. Mm -hmm. How do you get that perception? Mm -hmm. How do you think? How do you get that perception? It got to be divinely given, brother. It got to be divinely given. And you you just can't pick it up. But if you follow these instructions, if you get that conviction to follow it, then you can perceive because that law brings a light. And that light, can make you see things and seeing gives you a certain perspective of things saying I can see better it's Mm -hmm. like I know that stove if I turn the stove on and the burners get hot I done saw somebody touch that before and got burnt right so now I saw they got burnt I I know if I touch it I'm going to get burnt Mm -hmm. so I, I know not to touch that hot stove and a lot of people don't know if you play with fire, you will get burned. Mm-hmm. And they know they'll get burnt, but they go and play with the fire anyway. Because they have void, made void the thing, the very thing that tell them not to touch it. So if you may void the law, which telling you things that not to do, then it's you living. It's you living. But if you make the law a light and obey it, then it's you that's dying because it's showing you it's going to bring, it's death waiting over there on you. Hmm? It's bringing the knowledge of death. The law is bringing the knowledge of sin and, and we're taught the script, the wages of sin is death. We all got an appointment to die, whether you're sin or don't sin, we got an appointment <laughs> and we ain't going to miss it. But it's the manner in which you die with the knowledge that you take with you to this grave is the one that's going to give life or give death. And so if you don't have the knowledge of sin, how can you have the knowledge of life? Right. And I think that's the essence of what Shaul is talking about is because you got to remember where he's coming from. He, he, he was a, a Talmudic Jew. Mm-hmm. Okay. And he knew that these commandments from the Torah brought him life. Mm -hmm. But when he converted to Yahshua and the spirit of Yahshua entered into him, it started to show him this cuts another way. Mm -hmm. That your Judaism can't show you. Mm -hmm. So your Judaism is limited. And this Mm -hmm. is a big problem today. That's why it's the covenant of Agar. Mm -hmm. Because it's a covenant of bondage. Yes. You have no way out with Judaism. And yet in this faith, we got a lot of people bringing Kabbalah now, all kinds of other stuff into this, you know. Mm -hmm. But my point here is, is that he's saying that when he was under that system, he saw it to bring life. Yes. And then when he got into this system over here, the spirit started showing him, oh, well, you know, over there, you thought that you only had to go to this point with the law. Mm -hmm. 
But now I'm showing you you're guilty of this and this, of the same law now, mm -hmm. but in a spiritual discerning sense, you do this over here. Mm -hmm. When you told that person that you went to the market and you bought some fruits and vegetables and you also went somewhere else after that, but you didn't want that person to know. Mm -hmm. So you only told them part of the story that you did go to the market, mm -hmm. but you left out through omission the other part because if you told him that, he's gonna try to draw some kind of conclusion that you were up to no good somewhere else even though you weren't. Mm -hmm. So you lied through omission. Mm -hmm. Now Judaism isn't gonna teach you that. It takes the Ruach to convince your, convict your soul mm -hmm. that that same law that made you stop over here is telling you, oh no, you got to go way beyond that. Don't do that like that no more. Yes. Yeah. You could have said, yes, I did go to the market. I did buy the vegetables. And by the way, I did go over to here, such and such. And I went and I did this, that, and the other. And it takes away the person's argument. Mm -hmm. You didn't need to conceal it. Mm -mm. Now, maybe in a case, it's okay to conceal it. I'm just trying to make a point. Right. That when he was over there with the Jews, the Judaism, mm -hmm. He was shown one thing, but when he got over here, he found out your righteousness has got to go beyond that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, verse 11. For sin taking occasion mm -hmm. as a starting point by the commandment deceived. Now, this is the thing here. It's mm -hmm. saying, it doesn't say that the commandment took occasion. Mm-hmm said that the sin took occasion. It used the command. And they want to say that the mm -hmm. sin is, it, the, the law is a sin. Mm -hmm. It's bondage. Mm -hmm. The law don't take advantage of nothing. Mm -hmm. It's just an instruction book mm -hmm. of do's and don'ts. Mm -hmm. It's that simple. Uh, deceived through seduction of me, mm -hmm. and it killed and destroyed me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because... Paul was going at the people that he was saying was blaspheming the name of Yahweh when they was actually honoring the name. But the commandment as he saw it, that you couldn't say the name. Mm, exactly. The <laughs> you couldn't name. use the name. Mm -hmm. And then they was promoting the son, which was another one of breaking the law, right. what he knew. Right, right. Huh? You should have no other one. And, and so he went on a mission, given permission by his teachers, which were man. Huh? But they didn't know they were sending him to, re, to, to meet the teacher of all teachers. Right, huh? right. You know, and, and so he went on this mission only to meet the person that he was out to destroy. Huh? Yeah, he yeah. thought he was going to destroy a people, but you cannot destroy this law. Huh? He went on a mission to destroy the law of the spirit only to meet it and receive it. I don't think people quite are, that somehow they divest Yahshua, the Messiah, from the commandments. Mm -hmm. Like it's two separate things. It says the word and thy word is truth mm -hmm. and thy word is Torah mm -hmm. commandments mm -hmm. became flesh. Yes. Yes. But they put a scissors to it and they separate it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You, you just can't do that. It's not possible. It, 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 if they're stuttering, if they're really studying the apostle like they say they are, then I believe it's in the eighth chapter of Romans when he said, the law of the spirit of life in Messiah Yeshua has freed us from the law of sin and death. death. So it's, he is the law of the spirit of life. You cannot separate him. You cannot. He is a law. You know? and, and, and when you find out, it's things that just die that makes it no longer you. I have to decrease so that he increase. So it's something that has to come and take away me. I died. Hmm? But Paul said to uh, the same teacher, uh, to the called out in, in Galatia, yet not I, but the Messiah lives in me. And the life that I live 
in this flesh I live according to the son of Yahweh who loved me and gave himself for me. It was a penalty for this sin. Mm -hmm. So if you still going around without a penalty, well, what's telling you that you don't, that you have a penalty? Something without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. It's something that got to tell you that it's a sin. You know, the thing is, is that you talked about before when you're in prison, it's the law that convicted you of mm -hmm. your transgressions that got you there. Mm -hmm. But then Yahweh made the judge give you the law of life. Mm -hmm. And he let you out. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Thank you. Father. So had you gone back to the lifestyle, the same law that brought death would have come back and reemerged again. Mm -hmm. Should they police catch up with you unless you continue the back roads. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, it ain't no back roads in your way. Mm -mm. All right. So let's.